Glenn, stop looking at your phone. Look at me. Look at my video. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Come on, Glenn. It's only 20 minutes. It's not that hard. <laughs> Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with Glenn from Number One Projects, Hobar from Behind the Mistakes, and me, KJ, from Crude with Efficient. Episode 40! Woohoo! You know what that means? A new season! Woohoo! Yay! Season 4! Because we count differently on this uh, podcast. I mean, episode numbers, half numbers. It's, yeah. it's not counting <laughs> we do differently <laughs> alone i mean <laughs> yeah it's some kind of hollywood accounting perhaps <laughs> so how have you been <laughs> okay moving on <laughs> next question were you so were you so spent after last week's uh, episode <laughs> where we had two guests but two, were two guests too many no I think it was the guests brilliant. guests were brilliant. And, yes. uh, but yeah, it's nice sitting at your own desk and not uh, setting yourself up in a hotel room in a, in a city and a place you don't want to be, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I am a home buddy. I want to stay at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely understand that. It was, re- it was really nice having both, both Sarah and Phil on. And I mean, when my m- wife listened to the episode, she said, you didn't say much, did you? No, perhaps. <laughs> well, you want to you want to l- l- let the guests in, yeah, and also take a backseat. At least when you have two guests, of course, you have to tone yourself down extra. Um, and I also spent a lot of time googling, also after the episode, because when they started talking <laughs> about naming things and referencing things in the intro, it's like, all right, I was trying to write down. <laughs> things to check afterwards, but I, I only got half of it, I think. Yeah, when you they started uh, rattling off uh, different uh, suites and that sort of thing, I just yeah. went blank, more or less. <laughs> I, I I don't think I recognized a single one of those on the specialty list. <laughs> no, it was it was a it was nice having them on. I understood what they were going on about most of the time. The stolen <laughs> thing was the funniest part for me. <laughs> <laughs> the stolen. <laughs> yeah, so I think the uh, the next logical step would be if you could get samples of all of those candies, Glenn, and just bring them over here in October, and then uh, we can have a, a tasting and like, oh, oh, yeah, now we understand what this spoke about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a bit Done. chewy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Done. <laughs> Apart from we did talk about obsolete ones as well, so that might be problematic. Yeah. Well, there is probably a newer derivative, so you, you can find the closest one. We trust you. I'll just I'll just bring something. <laughs> tell you yeah. it doesn't matter. You just fake thing. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We would know. <laughs> this is a mint flavored rabbit drop in. <laughs> <laughs> just put some toothpaste on a turd and <laughs> said it's a candy. Yeah. We would believe you. I yeah. mean, you are weird. Yeah. <laughs> On that island. <laughs> it's a traditional British <laughs> snack. Don't you start with your bloody sugar on a string. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, but no, no, we can't talk about national dishes that, that we're going to lose. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it will be a draw. I think we're all equally weird. Um, but we, what we didn't do last week was have any kind of catch up on what we've been up to and and that sort of thing. So, have you been up to anything the last two weeks? Hover seems to be looking into the distance, so Glenn? <laughs> I'm just wondering what he's holding up in front of the camera. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a felt pen. <laughs> mim- mim- mimicking a feather. Oh, I uh, thought it was a, a very fancy knife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could be. I could remove the pen bit and then like make a scriber knife thingy, but I got the feeling that's done before. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I got a video out. I did um, finish the challenge video. You did? Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that for the uh, drill storage. Um, and then I made a marking knife, and I did a little video for that. And then what did I do after that? Oh, we had to go making some dovetails over the weekend. That was a fail. 
<laughs> I get fascinated. I, I like the idea of going through a process of doing things. And um, but uh, this one, as soon as I started, I wasn't enjoying it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's Let's a sign that you should stop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I was going to make a box, and so when I put the first corner together and it didn't work, I'm thinking, "Well, that's a relief. I don't have to do this three more times." <laughs> 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 yeah, dove, dovetails are tricky on the uh, on teak when you've had a few pints of beer. I don't recommend it. It I seems know, like man. you were starting starting playing that game on hard. <laughs> yeah, with the choice of wood <laughs> and uh, alcohol uh, as well. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. going back to your your video, um, the drill press storage. I must say that's I think it's one of your best videos. Uh, yeah. So far. I mean both in the video producing aspects and the project as well. And yeah. Uh, it turned right. out pretty good. Oh thank you. It's a shame nobody's watched it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing when <laughs> when you make something good, no one cares. No. Yeah. Yeah, that's um I don't think I got the thumbnail or the title right on that one. I mean I changed the title several times, but it uh, it didn't work, it didn't re energize the video at all. So, you know, what can you do? You try well, these things. You could try the new, um, I think YouTube now rolled out a new function into their uh, studio that where you can actually test. Uh, you upload your uh, thumbnail and then they will give you like a rating of some sort. Oh, okay. And I'm not sure how it's used, but I I got an ad for it, uh, and then they showed me like uh, these are your three top uh, like uh, thumbnails, and uh, like and then they listed a lot of things that's just given. So you didn't learn anything new, but uh, you should right. be able to test your uh, your sketch. But then again, if you're using AI in the first place, it will probably just take the algorithm into account. So. <laughs> I think I'm going to give up on long uh, form videos anyway. I think shorts are my thing. I seem to do pretty well on shorts just lately, so yeah. I'm just going to do that just for you two guys because you love it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's it's easier to go that. I mean, you can always make shorts out of your longs. Yeah, but yeah. It's harder the other way around. I mean, taking a short and just lowering the speed it, it gets <laughs> it gets it gets soggy after a while. <laughs> I mean, you have pitch correction and everything for the voice, but you reach a threshold where it, it, it doesn't seem right. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. no, I, I will obviously carry on making long form videos. Yeah, but, it's um... not I have you covered because uh, I'm <laughs> yeah. going long. I mean, it's, it's like in football, go deep. And he went. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't made a two-part video yet where it's split up but uh, i'm i'm almost there with the next video but it's i don't have a cliffhanger in like in the middle so there's no natural point of splitting it so i'm thinking like should i make a, a short one for people with uh, um, a slow attention range and then uh, the longer one for people who are interested in how it was actually done but i'm a bit on the fence because if you it's basically the same video, different length, uh, and you can't post them at the same time. So how do you spread them out? Do you do one next one week and the next one the next week? I'm like, oh, stupid teaspoon, get away! <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could just make one, that would be okay with me, because if you make two, I'll because it's you, I'd still feel obliged to watch them both. So <laughs> just just one or one regular one and a short. Yeah, I could make three, actually. I, I can make a, a Glen edition, and I could just make it, like, private, so you have to have the link, and I can send it to you, so it's, like, a, it's a separate voiceover just highlighting. Okay, watch here, Glenn, and now you can jump to 7.49, and uh, you'll see how it's actually done here, and then, uh, <laughs> like, a speed run. <laughs> With automatic scroll past things. I know that you think is this is boring, so we jump ahead. <laughs> Yeah, that would be brilliant. Ah, oh, this you—you you don't care about this. You know this, and I'm sure, yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> what you should do on your longer videos is just put a little segment in every once in a while. Glenn, stop looking at your phone. Look at me. Look at my video. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Glenn. It's only 20 minutes. It's not that hard. <laughs> And I, we're putting an intermission here so you can get up, get off the toilet and <laughs> you shouldn't be sitting Stretch that long. Stretch your legs, yeah, yeah, so you don't cut off your circulation. <laughs> Maybe that's it if you do a long video. Do it in four parts for me. Yeah. So I and I release once every week, so it's like uh, old-time television. Yeah. This it's happened last clear. week and then uh, in, <laughs> in next week and then you show some highlights. I mean... Uh, you're, <laughs> I mean, I'm oh, giving I myself so... work here, but yeah. I so hate that when I'm in the next episode. I don't want to see that. Why no. give me spoilers for the ne- ep- ne- next episode? And also, when I watch an episode, I, you don't need to spend five minutes showing me what happened last time. I mean, I, I still have a decent amount of memory. Yeah. yeah I quite like that function. I love the function that you can skip it and skip the intro as well. So yeah, no, I, 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 I'll, I'll never uh, implement a skip function that is, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's all or nothing. <laughs> so, how, how have you, or your last two weeks been? What have you been up to? Um, I've been procrastinating, wrapping up the hell quarter. Um, and then I stumbled over uh, a great deal on a KitchenAid, which kind of boosted that project. So I've spent the last week uh, taking a KitchenAid apart and a uh, lawnmower hedge trimmer equipment and tr- trying to figure out how to mate those together. And that was like a, a foot in a glove. I mean, it, it needed very little persuasion. Uh, so I just now in the process of finalizing the adapter piece that's going to make the connection a bit nicer. So I'm I'm ready of the startup and then hopefully filming an outro. And then I realized, I think it's American Metal Fabrications or something. There is a guy on Instagram who's actually also doing the same with a KitchenAid. Just realized in parallel i'm i'm not sure if it is because we talked about it on the podcast before or something and then the algorithm picked up on it and just showed me that so like all right there's another one doing the same thing so (laughs) but he's not on youtube so i don't think there's too much overlay there but of course i'm planning on the first (laughs) (laughs) you announced you were doing it ages ago so it doesn't matter no and uh i mean he's a metal fabricator so i'm guessing he's going all on board with the metal fabricating part. I'm, uh, I have a CNC, so I made an adapter piece in plywood. <laughs> so it's like totally different tech. Have you got a name for this creation yet? No, not yet. So that's no. uh, it's going to be a, a KitchenAid 2000. But then again, it's a brand, so maybe I should have something that's similar but not identical. Yeah. So. Um, because I'm not sure how happy I'm going to be with it, but I mean it's it's brilliant. So they they can have the design rights if they want them. I'll give them away. <laughs> I just want to be mentioned as a designer. That's the <laughs> <laughs> unless they sell millions of them, of course. Then I want royalties. So yeah, maybe God. not. <laughs> the garden kitchen range. That would work, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that that is brilliant. Because now. I've got the engine coupled to the original axle inside the KitchenAid. That means that the uh, the attachment piece on the front is actually fully operational. That means that I can put all the KitchenAid accessories to the front. But I also have that mm-hmm. chainsaw adapter for the hedge trimmer. And that almost fit that attachment hole on the front of the KitchenAid <laughs> with minor modifications. So I think that's going to be a second video. Like, I built this creation, but it also has attachments. And then, of course, you can put the chainsaw on and run that to use that to cut carrots or, or something. I mean... Uh... I was think, thinking not only does it mix the bread mixture, it also slices the bread once it's baked. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so you more or less put the kitchen aid instead of, instead of the handle between the motor and the. <laughs> and then, if you need, uh, I mean, if you need more firewood to your fire to uh, like uh, cook the bread, then uh, you can cut down a tree with it and then just run around with the kitchen aid under your arm, cutting down. I'm, I'm kind of guessing that's going to put a lot of strain on that axle connection. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to make sure I'm going to film the main video first because it might tear itself yeah. apart. <laughs> Yeah, Sounds two, like a good plan. Two-stroke engines do tend to spin quite fast, don't they? Yeah, but the electric motor in there, if you spin that axle by hand, uh, the attachment for the, the whisk or whatever it's called, it moves really slowly. So it is yeah. geared very low. So that motor is spinning really fast. I think actually the the petrol engine might not be far off. And I think... It's a decent kind of electric engine in there. Of course, the petrol engine is going to be more powerful, but maybe the by only be. double or something like that. Yeah, quite similar. But I mean, the hard thing if I mean you're just idling the the petrol engine and then finding the right amount of of gas as well. How how how? Yeah, that's going to be tricky if you're doing it by hand. I think. Oh yeah, but the the, right um, speed. Uh, the throttle wire, it has a s- not very much play, but it matches really good with the uh, the speed selector on the the <laughs> KitchenAid. So I just need to drill a hole uh, to actually fit that wire in, so I can actually use the original speed control, and I just have to find the attachment of the wire on that lever where when it's in zero, it's zero tension on the throttle wire. And then when I put it to max, it also maxes out the throttle wire so that I can <laughs> use the entire range of that. So that's so good. So it's, yeah. I mean, even if it, if it works for five seconds enough to film a video where I'm trying to whip cream or whatever, <laughs> that is a win. And the, after that, I'm I'm happy having it on a shelf on display because it looks amazing. And then, yeah. of I course, mean, you, um, you can't really lose with this project because if it works, it's brilliant, and if it fails, it's, it's going to be brilliant as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and on the other hand, it's also built. I mean, in. There is an electric motor there, so so the axle that goes through it is a part of the the inner core and the wires of the electric engine. So, and there are some beefy roller bearings in there. So of course, if I want to beef up that axle, I can just pull everything out. I get a more beefier axle, and I just need new roller bearings. And these are standards. So I just choose one with a different inner diameter. Just put that mm-hmm. in there. So if I sometime in the future get a, a, a small table lathe, which I'm planning on, I can make that axle and you can make attachments for a lot of things. So th- there is potential here of actually doing a lot of fun with that. Oh my God. Why did I never think of powering my lathe with an engine? <laughs> <laughs> that would but be that's brilliant. A- yeah, but that's lane. that's an yeah. easy fix, isn't it? Yeah, really easy. You just need you need Glenn's um no, you need KJ's um oh, angle chuck. grinder attachment chuck. Yeah. yeah. So you just need to weld that to the axle of a like a petrol engine and then you have everything you need. Yeah. Yeah, that's I've an afternoon. Sp- I've got a spare chuck already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. You probably have an old uh Lawn so, equipment you can donate yeah. as well. Then that, which, that, which which one are you gonna toss out? Is it I've a got, chainsaw, a lawnmower? <laughs> I've yeah, actually because, got an I've got an old magic machine. Ah, yeah, because yeah, I'm guessing you have something that you are just dying to get the newer, better version, and here it is. All right, and I'm yeah. gonna take this one and use for that, and then I have to get that newer, <laughs> fancier one with a, a V8, and yeah. <laughs> Also have a, a a spare still hedge trimmer at the moment as well. An old, it's an older one, so I replaced it, but it still does run. So that'd be yeah. a tight, not really nice little tidy engine to put on a lathe. I also saw a 
Well, when I, when I took this one apart, I realized the axles in there in the attachment. I'm pretty sure it's the same dimension. So if I take my uh, my Stiga multi-purpose uh, something, I, I think the axle's gonna match up. So I th I, th I think there's a good chance that the accessories yeah. from one match the other um, with minor modifications, maybe. Are you, are you... Um, Will the uh, is, is will the engine be removable easy and still be able to attach to the hedge trimmer and or the trimmer and the chainsaw attachment? Yeah, I've done nothing to it, yeah. so I just oh. have to undo four bolts, pull it off, and then I can use it as a hedge trimmer again. So I think I think you should do the short as a um, as a an advert for the machine then, because often you'll get a three in one garden machinery, won't you? Or you can do the four in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that would be brilliant. <laughs> oh, we were thinking about this all wrong. It's not a not a kitchen industry you're going to sell this to. It's a garden industry yeah. it has an extra yeah. attachment. <laughs> First, you're out. You're cutting your hedges, and then you're putting the attachment on. You're cutting down some more coarser branches, and when you're tired, you want to have a cup of coffee and a nice piece of bread. So. Or whatever, and then then you need the new KitchenAid attachment. <laughs> like, -da 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 -da. yeah. <laughs> There's a... I have actually found the the perfect spot for filming the intro slash outro to it, and it is. It's a five minute drive from where I live, and it's like at the lake in the forest. It's very easy to get to. But it's also a very popular area for people to just go for a stroll. And you, when you're filming this, you <laughs> really don't want spectators. So I'm thinking, all right, if it's a nice morning on a Tuesday or Wednesday, people are at work or school or the pensioners haven't gotten up yet. So yeah. there is a time window there where I have to take a few hours off work to run into the forest to drive my petrol-powered KitchenAid at the lake. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also, I mean, if you look at that KitchenAid, it has the feel of a, a 70s outboard engine as well. So you yeah. could probably just prop it over the, the back of a boat and then just make it uh, power you from one. Yeah, that's just a different kind other. of whisk, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. But that's that's the thing. I, I thought of making a propeller to the attachment uh, the, for the, the the weed whacker function of it and just, just like do a stand-up paddleboard. Uh, and then I found on online, they actually sell these long axles with a propeller for, uh, for a drill, a battery-powered drill to, to like mm. power an inflatable dinghy or whatever. All right, those are kind of cheap. So why spend a lot of time building something crappy when you can buy that and just make the connections? Uh, and then I started googling a bit, and all right, someone's done that. And yeah, on a on a stand up paddleboard which has very little resistance, they got no speed out of like these garden trimmers. So it didn't even look fun. So you need a bigger engine. Yeah, yeah, probably need a big one. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> what about you, KJ? What have you been up to? Uh, well, uh, I've also published a video. You have. <laughs> or, more or less uh, a month after the event, I got the Maker Central video out. <laughs> it's That's a nice, it's a nice video, but I do have one question: Why does my wife feature in it so much, <laughs> and you don't? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I counted. She's in it three times. It's a little bit, a little bit creepy. That KJ, what's going on? <laughs> well, you were always hiding when I pulled up the camera, so oh. <laughs> and you, Shell was always so close by. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. I mean, the the fun thing with that video is, I mean, most of it was just filmed on the go. I just took a lap at the at the show and filmed some stuff here and there, and I managed to capture some really great moments, I think. It was just pure yeah. luck that I saw that. And I wonder how many other moments no one else <laughs> saw. I mean no, I thought it was a, a really lovely video and I think it's amazing that how you remembered and managed to capture so much of it when me and Havard didn't have any responsibilities there and didn't manage to do anything. Yeah, you 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 slept too much <laughs> and, and had a low uh, 
resting <laughs> pulse and that sort of thing. I kind of have to disagree here. I, I think I have the prettiest picture of the Premier Inn of anyone <laughs> at Maker Central. So, uh, true story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So next year, will I be able to uh, lure you to the Hilton bar in any of the evenings after oh, seeing what it looked like? I would have thought so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. The next time coming yeah. Friday evening, perhaps? Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. But the problem is, I mean, they're, it's the same date. And that's like... Right. It, it is my daughter's birthday, and it would be bad going there without bringing her, just leaving her on her birthday. And, of course, bringing her the second time, I think she was a champ and find yeah. everything interesting. But if, like, oh, we're back here again, it's the same people. You spoke <laughs> with them last year. I mean, it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So mm, yeah. Yeah, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Do you think? Do you think you'll come next year? I will definitely. It's yeah. on the table, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. And then I wanted to discuss with you because I've never seen it as an option, but I've seen a lot of people posting stuff from uh, Open Sausage or what what it's called uh, in <laughs> San Francisco. And, uh, open Source would be brilliant. I, n- I never yeah, thought about it, but when I saw the pictures where people are posting, all right, this looks better than the people have managed to advertise it as. And then, of course... Uh, the best restaurant I ever been to is in San Francisco and me and my wife were there a few years ago and really, really loved it. It's one of the cities we want to go back to. So then it's like, all right, could I get babysitters and pull off, uh, like inviting my wife, but I have to ditch you for two days <laughs> because <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to like uh, make her go through open sauce uh, if she doesn't want to. And then, you can have a couple of days just uh, hanging around in San Francisco, yeah. But then again, it's a long flight. Last time we were only the two of us and we had several weeks, so it made sense. But doing that journey, even if you find decent airplane tickets, it's yeah. it's a long journey for just a few days. So Yeah. Did you see the entry fee for getting in for the weekend? No. It's $200. For the weekend or four hundred dollars if you wanted the vip tickets yeah so we have then roughly uh, half a year to a year to get famous enough to be uh, just invited <laughs> as a, no problem uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i mean uh, chief of marketing you have a goal <laughs> no worries no problem <laughs> yeah i'll you should concentrate. always have stretch goals yeah i'll concentrate on shorts you can do long talky videos kj you can just be awesome <laughs> <laughs> I will do my best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, open source would be great, and I I would like to go to Maker Camp sometime as well. But oh, f- flying over the Atlantic is oh, it's it's not appealing at all to me. No, and I mean that's the kind of money where you're looking at. I could get some proper tools for that. So it's like yes, <laughs> <laughs> that too. I've got to admit, the American ones don't appeal to me at all. Yeah. But maybe that's because I don't interact with anybody in America. Quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah. They are quite friendly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Some of them carry guns, but yeah. (laughs) I've been watching Mellow Labs um, progress on uh, Instagram of it all, and um, the makers he keeps flashing up there, I don't, I don't recognise at all, to be honest with you. You need to get out more. Yeah, probably do. I need to start watching YouTube. <laughs> it's kind of weird for one watching that much YouTube and social media that you didn't know more of the makers on open source. <laughs> I don't watch that much YouTube. <laughs> I mean, it, it dawned on me just the other day that, yeah, I don't watch YouTube. I, I make YouTube. Instead. Yeah. <laughs> But I've actually been been watching more YouTube uh, lately, so my watch later list is down to I think a hundred and thirty something, yeah. which is uh, great progress from like one hundred and eighty just a couple of weeks ago. 
So. I'm going the other way because I just deleted my watch later list because I did the same realization as Glenn did that I, I, I don't have time to watch YouTube. But now I have three or four videos on that list that are at these I, I need to see at some point and we'll see. Yeah, I think there's only a handful of makers that I watch religiously on YouTube all the time. You're you're two of them, so <laughs> that's a weird religion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would that religion be called? <laughs> that's nice call there. <laughs> <laughs> Who of us is the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost? I wonder. <laughs> I mean, I don't, it's, want, it's the, I don't want to be any of those. <laughs> I was <laughs> thinking if we're going to start uh, something new, then instead of referencing something old and boring, then you should really go far off and do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, the Scientology Church, they have, they have done well for themselves. There, there is a lot of money in religion. I so, was thinking I mean, that uh, as well. <laughs> if we can tap into that without like making it too weird... We can there, find is a, there, there is a fine travels. line between a religion, a cult, and a, a social media following, <laughs> so, and a scam. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, I always, I always thought it was a shame that scientists didn't get that name first, because I'd rather be a Scientologist than a scientist. <laughs> I just think it's a better name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Other than that, in the last couple of weeks, I, I feel I've mostly done garden work uh, me too part, <laughs> but I haven't gotten paid for it so. <laughs> fair enough <laughs> sadly <laughs> no because uh, partly it's because the, the weather has been nice uh, yeah. so then you want to take the chance to actually make progress on all of the I don't want to count how many garden projects we have going on at the same time uh, but also I feel like my my videos have to catch up my workshop because I mean I have uh, three videos uh, ready to be edited at the moment, and that feels feels weird to to, <laughs> to add on to that pile. I need to get some stuff out instead. Oh, that would make me so happy if I've got three videos to edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had yeah. Um, it was Father's Day here on uh, Sunday, so that was something else that happened here, and I got a a new old block plane. Oh. That was a very nice gift. That was. Yes. yes, Phil Makes had a hand in it. Michelle contacted him and said, Glenn wants a block plane. What should I get him? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he, he nice. sourced that one and uh, told her, pointed in the right direction. So, yeah, very happy with that. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. And then we went off um, to do a bit of shopping. That was uh, rubbish. <laughs> went to a, <laughs> a big shopping outlet and it was so busy. Of people just taking the time shopping, getting under my feet, it drove me nuts. For fun. For fun, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. Yeah, speaking of things that people do for fun, that's weird. Uh, I last weekend I went to a wedding, uh, so that ate up that weekend. <laughs> you look very dapper in your suit, KJ. Yeah. Well, I mean. Uh, it's dress up, so why don't dress up, yeah. <laughs> so to say? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of weddings. Uh, well, I saw um, my cousin attended a wedding. I saw on uh, Instagram, and uh, they did not know they were attending a wedding. So <laughs> that's the, nice. the, the bride and the groom. They they just invited a lot of people for like a barbecue and a party, like a regular Saturday, and people just arrived ready for a party and like. There's a lot of chairs out on the lawn, and there's a vicar. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> surprise, we're getting married. And uh, of course, nobody had dressed up. They just brought their own drinks like any regular nice. party, and it, it was a blast. Yeah. So I, I really like that uh, concept. That would be the best kind of wedding for me to attend, because then there's no, no planning, no awkward people doing awkward stuff other than in the spur of the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I think Weddings are okay. It's just that they go on for quite a long time, don't they? I mean, it's a whole day and a night, isn't it, basically? Yeah. You know, if they could restrict them to two to three hours, I think they'd be great. Yeah. And then there's the 
I just want the short version. <laughs> yeah, they, they they should have a short one for some of us, and then uh, they do the extended cut for the rest of the people who want to <laughs> be there for that. Um, we went to a wedding a few years ago, and it we were not like very close to the uh, bride and groom, so um, of course it was not a lot of people that we knew there, and they were of course. There is a lot of people that has different takes on the wedding and someone uh, has probably planned this for years and there are all kinds of rules and this was in the summer um, and I know nothing about these rules. So, of course, uh, it was hot outside. So the first thing I did was I lost my jacket. And then there is, of course, a, a rule that nobody should take their jackets off before the groom does it. So I'm, I'm just Jesus. sitting there like a, a lighthouse, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> uh, and then of course it's all the things when you under the, during the dinner, uh, if someone uh, taps the glass, of course, then it's a, it's a speech. Uh, but then if you do like this, then the, the bride has to kiss the groom. Um, if the groom leaves the room, then everybody is free to run up and kiss the bride. And it's like, all these things and oh they God. thought it was hilarious and i was just sitting i don't know these people i'm just being nice attending my wife and she just knows them just in her peripheral circuit of friends so it's, it's really awkward sitting there not knowing anything of what is expected from you <laughs> and it's like all right now we're going to do this and we're going to play this game and we're going to do like this tradition and like i haven't heard of any of those i mean where i come <laughs> from it's like all right we're getting married bring booze and then we put out a big pan of uh, like a traditional stew and then you eat and you drink and at some point in the evening you get a bit peckish so you eat the leftovers and then if anyone is standing at four o'clock then it's a win <laughs> was that what your wedding was like I know uh, I, I'm an introvert, so we just had a very short uh, ceremony with the closest friends and had a dinner afterwards and called it a day. Oh, so that would have been done. brilliant for you, Glenn, because <laughs> yeah. we were we were done and in bed by at nine. So <laughs> that sounded very much like uh, our wedding. We just went to the city hall. I think we, we took the long version. It was it was like three minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but but then again, my my wife was uh, I think eight months pregnant at the moment, so we weren't. <laughs> yep, that's um, that's the same here. Is like you, I, I'm not sure if you could call it a shotgun wedding, but uh, after we got our first daughter, we went to the the states and we went to the south, and of course, talking to people and they're they're very friendly in a, an American kind of way, and of course. Uh, when you have a baby, everyone like wants to talk to you and it's nice. And then we realized none of us are religious. Um, and of course, we, we haven't waited with doing anything until we got married. But <laughs> it happens to be that for reasons not planned, we have done everything in the right order almost. So, I mean, we we moved together and then we got married and then we got children. So even though we were down in the south, we, we ticked off all the boxes. So we were like, uh, yeah, you're all right. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we had a, um, a church wedding in this village that we live in now. We've just moved here two weeks before we got married. And um, then we had a marquee up in uh, Shell's parents' garden and had all the friends and family there. And it was, uh, yeah, it was catered for. We had a hog roast. That was nice. And nice. everybody just bought that we did we said we didn't want any presents just bring loads of booze so <laughs> we had booze for about four months afterwards as well still <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's great fun and um yeah, the wees were popular at that point you know the nintendo wii all right so we had a little uh gazebo set up outside with a wii set up with guitar hero as well so that's where i spent most of the evening <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had a thought uh, just before I started recording that we haven't gotten an, an update, I think, 
power on the the CNC trouble. Yeah. Did you find uh, did you find what was wrong with your maniac robots? No. Um, I haven't got a reply from customer service. I've se- I sent him a, a follow up. Haven't gotten a reply on that. So, of course, I'm gonna now reroute all that through the company I bought it from because they are like the Norwegian uh, licensed company to to sell them. So I'm just gonna pin it on them because I still believe I'm within warranty. So I'm I'm gonna try to push them a bit hard on that because I I really would like to know what went wrong there um but then again I'm, I'm i'm of course i'm using it i just made this one but still this uh it's a cheap piece of plywood so it doesn't cost me anything if it mangles this one but yeah uh, and I'm, i've been kind of annoyed because they don't reply and then i ordered like an id card with a qr code on uh, from a company and I got uh, like order confirmation, and after that, I haven't heard anything. I sent him uh, an email like, "What's the status on the order?" Uh, I haven't gotten a like a notification that it's in the mail. They didn't reply on that. I sent a new email like a, a week after, like, "All right, what's the status here? Just is it in the mail or what?" No, totally <laughs> ghosting. So it's. Uh, have you learned nothing from the uh, Maker Central getting on the Maker Central <laughs> list? <laughs> yeah, emails are dead, mate. Yeah. DM them. <laughs> Get on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Um, yeah. Ooh, I haven't checked if they are on Instagram, but yeah. My... But then again, I'm... I really like like answering people that are like uh, doing banter and so on, but I think I easily could go too far if I want to like uh, publicly humiliate something, someone for not replying. And then, of course, afterwards they, they come and like, Oh, sorry, mate. I've been uh, like uh, my grandmother has been ill or something, so I've been away yeah. for a week because it's a small company, and then yeah. you have done uh, like a lot of things on social media. Like, so yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's it's twenty pounds. So I mean, if I lose those money, that's sad. But yeah, I, I don't want to make myself the asshole for that. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't mean publicly shame them on Instagram. I meant just send them a message on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. We just tag them in a video where you show what's what what happened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the for the CNC, that's that's a big German company, so I have no problem in like uh, tagging them. I mean, they should have someone at customer yeah. service at work uh, worldwide enough to answer a reply. And I, I paid decent amount of money for that CNC, so I'm expecting them to kind of reply. I mean, if I bought a cheap one, I had to assemble myself from China. Then, of course, I would not have high expectations of any customer follow-up. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. Yay! <laughs> Yay. And now at the forty-minute mark, <laughs> the blue sugar has uh, gone down once yeah. more. So not that's good. That's a life change. <laughs> Maybe we should keep it short this week. That's a wrap, guys. Let's uh, tune in next week to see if there's any update on customer <laughs> service and uh, ID cards in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>